Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 6th Annual Shorthand Awards. Please put your hands together for our host, VP of Customer Success at Shorthand, Dawn Merton. Hello and welcome to the 6th Annual Shorthand Awards. I'm Dawn Merton, Shorthand's VP of Customer Success. There is much happening across the globe right now. At Shorthand, our mission is to connect the world's iconic brands to their audiences, their people, and each other. We believe a world informed by powerful stories is a smarter, more progressive, more resilient world. Each year, these awards are an opportunity for us to look back at the amazing work produced in the previous calendar year and to recognize our community's continued commitment to exceptional storytelling. Thousands of stories are built and published using shorthand every month. In 2021, we read detailed breakdowns of devastating airstrikes in Yemen and recognized the 20th anniversary of 9-11. We're invited to imagine the consequences of climate change, to celebrate the brand history of a football club and to puzzle our way out of a virtual escape room. From all of us at Shorthand, thank you to each and every one of our customers who use our platform every day. You work hard to create content that engages, inspires, raises awareness and often makes a difference. You're the reason that we're here. For this year's awards, we received almost 200 nominations across the seven categories. With so many deserving nominations, it was not an easy task to collate the shortlist, let alone choose the winners. In fact, our judges were so impressed with the finalists this year that we have honourable mentions in two different categories. Before we announce the winners, we'd like to extend a big thank you and introduce you to our amazing judging panel. Scott Manson, Chief Marketing Officer at Wonder and returning shorthand judge. Megan Ford, Vice President of Brand and Content Marketing at Wilson HCG. Jonathan Crossfield, Freelance Content Writer and Marketeer. Megan Fleming, Owner of Megan Fleming Writing and Creative Services. Dr. Caroline Graham, Award-winning Journalist and Academic. Bernie Borges, Vice President of Global Content Marketing at i -Core. They'll be with us later in the event to announce the winners. But first, this year we are beyond thrilled to start with our keynote speaker. Deanna McPherson is the newest member of Shorthand's Board of Directors and she's Chief Marketing Officer at Invoca. Deanna has held executive marketing roles at several fast-growing software companies including Movable Inc, Hootsuite and Yammer. Welcome Deanna, over to you. Thanks Don. Our appetite for information and entertainment is enormous. It's like Wu-Tang Clan needs to update its iconic song Cream to stand for content rules everything around me. As consumers, we've become insatiable researchers who aren't satisfied until we know every minute detail about whatever it is we're interested in, from epidemiology and the economy to our air fryer and why our cat doesn't want us to pet its belly. And the monotony of the pandemic only increased our desire for content to be our companions. With media consumption rising by almost an hour per day in 2020 to a new high of almost 13 and a half hours, according to eMarketer. That's a whole lot of cat videos and air fryer reviews right there. If you can put down your phone for just a second and be honest with me, when was the last time you went more than a couple of waking hours without looking at a screen? Content is flying at us from every direction, from news to blogs, podcasts, TikToks, memes, explainer videos, presentations, white papers, commercials, and the content stream goes on and on. We're living in a creator economy and content is ubiquitous. Brands and even individuals are trying to be media companies. There are more than 50 million independent content creators, curators, and community builders fueling this trend. These creators thrive because there is a demand for content for every interest you could possibly imagine, and people are seeking out their own corners of the internet to connect with content and communities 
tuned to their exact interest. The creator economy market is estimated to hit $104.2 billion this year. Mr. Beast, one of the top YouTubers, has 90 million subscribers and pulled in $54 million in 2021. And there are no signs that this will slow down. When my son was young, not all that long ago, I'd ask him what he wanted to be when he grew up. And like many little kids, he wanted to be an astronaut or a veterinarian. Today, if you ask a kid that question, there's a good chance they'll tell you they want to be a TikTok creator, a YouTuber, or an influencer. And you've got to admit, it's probably more realistic than becoming an astronaut. In a recent survey of 1,000 children done by First Choice, one-third of the respondents said that being a YouTuber was their dream job. And research from the Lego Foundation shows that 58% of children do create their own content. You've probably noticed this among the younger generation in your circle. So it's safe to say this trend is probably here to stay. But how is all this content affecting us as people and as publishers of content? I'm sure you've all heard about that Microsoft study that showed our attention span has fallen by 50% over 15 years. And now it's just eight seconds. That's less than the nine second attention span of a goldfish. Now the goldfish part is definitely debatable, but I've been talking a whole lot longer than eight seconds. So I have to admit that I'm a little concerned about my engagement metrics. This drop correlates with the rise of mobile phones, social networks, and video sharing. All right, another quick survey. When was the last time you caught yourself shooting off slacks on your laptop while watching a garlic noodle recipe video on your phone with the TV playing in the background? For me, that was yesterday. If you're like the average person, you have five devices that you use to consume content. We're hopping from one thing to the next, clicking our way into digital rabbit holes. In fact, more than half of all page views online now last less than one minute. And you can bet that people will bounce even faster if the content does not meet their needs or is poor quality. Now that there's exponentially more content available and a limited attention span to absorb it, how do we find our audience and keep them engaged? And more importantly, how does our audience find us in this endless sea of content? To connect with our audience, we have to be in all the places they are, with our content optimized for the channels and devices they consume it on. But should we create short, snackable content, given the short attention spans we're contending with? The answer is no. We're not always in goldfish mode here. In our distracted world of notifications, text messages, and tweets, High quality, immersive content provides a welcome break. A recent study from Edison reveals that on average, Australians listen to six podcast episodes a week in 2020, and 93% of podcast listeners got through all or most of each episode. Although our attention spans may be getting shorter, high quality, engaging content can hold its audience's attention. Our shorthand award nominees certainly know how to capture the attention of their audience, how do they do it? First, they carve out their corner of the room by really knowing their audience well. Do they want all of the details or do they want you to net it out? The best storytellers, like our nominees, know how to engage their audience by crafting a narrative that makes their readers feel something and learn something. They know you have to appeal to both the head and the heart. They give us an opportunity to see authentic moments that draw us to the people at the center of their stories. This holds true not just for editorial content, but also for brand content. Because as Malcolm Gladwell said, people do not buy goods and services. They buy relationships, stories, and magic. One of the ways our nominees make that magic is with visual storytelling. They bring their stories to life through stunning photos and videos, along with powerful illustrations, animations, and infographics that can make complex information easy to grasp. It might have something to do with the fact that visuals are processed by our brains 60,000 times faster than text. A picture's worth a thousand words, right? Immersive effects take that thousand word picture to the next level to capture the attention of the viewer and keep them engaged. In fact, some shorthand users have seen dwell times increase 85% through the addition of immersive effects. 
but it's important to use these effects strategically. You're aiming for that Goldilocks effect here. Draw them in with immersive and interactive elements, but you don't want to overwhelm people with too many moving parts. Eye-catching visuals with a premium look will draw readers in. High-quality storytelling combined with immersive effects will keep them engaged. When you can create content that reels in your audience from their hearts, you don't have to worry about the goldfish. I'd like to congratulate all of the nominees. Thank you for sharing your craft with us and inspiring us with your work. Dawn, I'll hand it back to you to get rolling with our first award. Thank you, Deanna. Without further ado, we're excited to announce the winners of the six annual Shorthand Awards. First up, we have the Best Education Story. This category recognised stories from students, educational institutions and learning and development teams that go that extra mile. The finalists for Best Education Story are Engaging Education and Future Goals Labour Market Report 2021 University of Queensland Catching Serial Killers Durham University Journeys I would like to introduce Judge Jonathan Crossfield who joins us virtually from the Blue Mountains near Sydney. Hi everyone. Now it's been a pleasure seeing all of the powerful stories built with shorthand in 2021. So well done to everyone involved. Now the winning story of this category filled the judging panel with excitement. This story transported us from wherever we were right into the heart of an exhibition. We got to choose our own journey, plus the mix of multimedia elements such as our playlist made it hugely interactive. The winner of the best education story is Durham University with Journeys Reading the World. Our next category is Best Business Story. This category recognises B2B, corporate comms and annual reports that delight and engage readers. The finalists for Best Business Story are Technion Neocon 2021 Press Kit Adweek, a marketer's guide to Twitch. Relics, emerging tech executive report. To announce the winner of best business story, I would like to introduce judge Megan Fleming, who joins us virtually from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Thanks, Don, and congratulations to all the finalists in this year's shorthand awards. Judges love this story. It was quirky, visually compelling and playful, while also being informative and well-written. It nailed the business objective, but it put the audience first. One judge said they would have been very proud to have had any part in the creation of this story. The winner for best business story is Adweek with A Marketer's Guide to Twitch. Thanks, Megan, and congratulations to Adweek. The next category is Best Brand Story, which recognizes brand publishing and visual marketing campaigns. The finalists for Best Brand Story are Penguin Random House UK, Lit in Color, TripAdvisor, All the Good in 2021, Norwich City Football Club, Project 50. To announce the winner of Best Brand Story, I would like to introduce Judge Bernie Borges, who joins us virtually from Tampa, Florida. Hello. Well done to everyone for creating such memorable content. The judging panel appreciated how this brand tackled the challenge of breaking down a large body of content into an easy to read, digestible and original summary. The beautifully vibrant design made it stand out and the calls to action were well placed. We also felt that the subject matter was relevant, timely, and relatable. The winner of the best brand story is Penguin Random House UK, 
with lit in color. Thank you, Bernie, and congratulations to Penguin Random House UK. This next category showcases the ways that not-for-profits, charities, and NGOs are using digital storytelling to evoke emotion, move readers to action, and inspire change in the world. The finalists for Best Not-for-Profit Story are WWF, Olympics Reimagined. Global Alliance for the Future of Food, The Politics of Knowledge. Marine Stewardship Council and Harpoon Productions, The Blue Cookbook. To announce the winner of Best Not-for-Profit Story, I would like to introduce Judge Megan Ford, who joins us virtually from Odessa, Florida. Thank you, Dawn, and a huge congratulations to all of the finalists. This category was notably strong. We felt the winning story used the platform in a seamless way to serve the audience rich and pragmatic content. We especially enjoyed the use of shorthand's collection section to host a multi-page experience. This was a big project with lots of different elements, so kudos to the creators for their tremendous effort. The winner of the best not-for-profit story is... The Marine Stewardship Council with The Blue Cookbook. Thank you, Megan, and congratulations to Marine Stewardship Council and Harpoon Productions. The not-for-profit category is our first with an honourable mention. The judges agreed that this story was powerful, emotive and well executed. They felt that it showcased a clear and simple message in a compelling and emotional way. One judge said that this story gave them goosebumps every time that they read it. The honourable mention goes to WWF Olympics Reimagined. It's time to announce this year's raffle winner. If your name appears on screen now, congratulations, you've won a selection of shorthand goodies. To claim your prize, email us at hello at shorthand.com and we'll get you sorted. Our next category recognises some of Shorthand's most impressive stories about arts, culture and heritage. The finalists for Best Arts and Culture Story are Art Centre Melbourne, Framing the Stage. Today, 20 Latino artists to watch. Sydney Opera House, The Disappearing Act. To announce the winner of Best Arts and Culture Story, I would like to introduce Judge Scott Manson, who joins us virtually from Shoreditch, London. Hi everyone. Hats off to all the content creators shortlisted in the Shorthand Awards. The judges agreed that this story was a genius use of shorthand. During the pandemic and global lockdowns, it provided a fun way to get involved with this organisation when no real life interaction was possible. The engagement also spread to socials and got people talking about their brand. And the winner of the best arts and culture story is... Sydney Opera House with The Disappearing Act. Thank you, Scott and congratulations to Sydney Opera House. Next, we have Best Editorial Story, a category which celebrates innovative use of shorthand for news and feature content. The finalists for Best Editorial Story are Stuff, Enduring, Restoring the Heart of Te Uruwera, Sky News, A War Crime in Yemen, The National, the events of 9-11, the day that changed the world. To announce the winner of Best Editorial Story, I would like to introduce Judge Dr Caroline Graham, who joins us virtually from the Gold Coast, Queensland. Thank you, Dawn. Well done to all of those who were shortlisted. This was another category that generated plenty of discussion amongst us judges. 
The winning story impressed the judging panel with its immersive and beautiful design. We felt it pulled readers into the story and it encouraged us to keep moving through it. Clever use of the platform helped to uncover the language and culture in more detail without ever breaking the flow of the narrative. And we also appreciated the addition of a podcast, which allowed readers to absorb information in a different way. The winner of the best editorial story is Stuff with Enduring, Restoring the Heart of Te Uruera. Thank you, Caroline, and congratulations to Stuff. This is our second category with an honourable mention. The judges felt that the creators clearly understood what shorthand could do and diligently planned their coverage with this in mind. They agreed that it was effective, immersive and incredibly powerful. The honourable mention goes to Sky News, a war crime in Yemen. Our next category is a brand new award for this year. The Craft Award recognises the contribution and outstanding achievements in the storytelling space by individuals. The winner was chosen because of their passion and dedication to innovative content that puts audiences first. As one of the early adopters of shorthand, this person was a driving force for long-form journalism at the BBC. When he left the BBC after over 15 years, he went on to set up his own agency, which specialises in the application of shorthand across multiple sectors. The winner has created hundreds of incredible stories and executed a number of successful campaigns. Congratulations to Giles Wilson of Harpoon Productions. Now for our final award. Our Community Choice Award gives you, our talented storytelling community and the wider public, a chance to decide the winner. The finalists for Community Choice Award are Protect Blue, Fisher's Manifesto Stuff, The Hoarder's Treasure Arab News, Battle for the Nile World Bank, Heeding the Call of a Country in Crisis Today, what eco-friendly lessons have you learned from the pandemic? English Heritage, Old London Bridge BBC News, The Lost Tablet and the Secret Documents. Opera Australia, Discover Your 2022 Season. Enable, Hashtag Enabling Change, Activity Report 2020 to 2021. Campaign Live, Seven Ways TikTok Works for Brands. To announce the winner of the Community Choice Award, please welcome Shorthand CEO, Ricky Robinson. Thank you, Dawn. Hi, everyone. Thanks for being with us to celebrate yet another year of powerful storytelling with Shorthand. The times we live in have called for brave editorial and bold brand storytelling. And our customers have delivered that through their amazing work. And we feel incredibly proud to have contributed to that in some small way. Each year, we like to give you, the shorthand community, an opportunity to honor that great work through the Shorthand Community Choice Award. We can always count on our community to select a story that doesn't just make fantastic use of the shorthand platform, but that is a positive example of powerful storytelling. The winner of this year's Shorthand Community Choice Award is Enable for their story, Enabling Change, Activity Report 2020 to 2021. What a brilliant job Enable did with this story. If you haven't had the chance to read it yet, please do. Congratulations to all the finalists and everyone who won an award today. Now, of course, I do have a few product announcements to share with you today, so let's get into that. First, here are some updates you might have missed over the last few months. 
our 3D images feature is now live for everyone. We announced this in beta at last year's Shorthand Awards, and since then we've made some real improvements. My favorite part of this feature is being able to place your text behind certain objects in an image, really giving your story an immersive feel. And of course, there's scroll points, which has quickly become one of your favorite new features, judging by the number of shorthand stories that include a scroll points section. This feature is awesome for describing details in high resolution images, for taking the reader on a journey over a stylized map, or simply drawing the reader's attention to a certain part of an image. Now, this next one might not be so interesting for the storytellers in the audience, but it's certainly interesting for the people in your organizations who have to vet shorthand the product and shorthand the company. Now, I'm talking about ISO 27001 and SOC 2 certifications. Essentially, these certifications provide independent validation that shorthand has implemented best practice security and handling of your data. Hopefully, you already trusted us to be doing the right things in these areas. But now we have the certificates to prove it, should your procurement teams need that assurance. Okay, now onto the brand new stuff. Real-time collaborative editing. When you have a hyper-rich editor like Shorthand with all sorts of things going on, it can be tricky to introduce real-time collaborative editing in a safe way. By that, I mean in a way that doesn't completely mess up your stories. I know it took a well-known graphic design product eight years of effort to accomplish this feat. Well, I'm pleased to announce that real-time collaborative editing is now available in shorthand and it works beautifully. Concurrent editing lays the foundation for more collaborative shorthand workspaces and improving workspace productivity, helping teams to get to done much faster. Next, the ability to undo and redo edits you've made to your story is kind of fundamental, right? To date, the shorthand editor has relied on the browser's built-in undo and redo capabilities. That might have been okay with single blocks of text, but it didn't work across multiple text blocks or sections or for images or section settings. Our purpose-built undo and redo feature empowers users to be more experimental and creative in the editor. For example, try different text, headlines, uh, even section types, images, fonts, and effects, knowing that if something doesn't work, you can always click undo. Whole sections can be deleted and then reinstated using undo. You know those times when you accidentally delete a section of your story and then you need to contact our support team to fix it? Well, you can say goodbye to all of that. Just click undo. Oh, and all of this works just as you'd expect in the context of our new real-time collaboration feature. You can only undo and redo the changes that you made personally. It won't affect any edits your colleagues have made to the story. Note that undos are limited to your current editing session. We know that many of our customers go to great lengths to produce images, especially for their shorthand stories. The results are stunning more often than not but there are times when you just need to find an image that fits, or maybe you need a placeholder image that's close enough to communicate to your colleagues what you want the final version of your story to look like. For those times, you now have built-in access to Unsplash's library of over a million beautiful free stock images. No more having to download those images to your hard drive and then having to upload them to shorthand and you'll be surprised at just how many of those Unsplash images seem to work amazingly with our 3D images feature. So beautiful, engaging storytelling is now within even easier reach. Speaking of 3D images, there is something else I'd like to show you. You already know that we're 
hard at work on reducing the number of things you need to do in an external tool like Photoshop before bringing them into shorthand. But there are some simpler effects that we can make available in the editor too, and so we have. These new scroll effects will help bring your stories to life in new and exciting ways. We have new title effects, including zoom, fade, and blur. And we have new effects for background images and videos too, including zoom, fade, blur, and grayscale, alongside the existing fixed or scroll positioning options. Each of these can be combined to wow your audiences and visually elevate your stories above the noise. As usual, we're always on standby to answer any questions about shorthand. We love to hear from you and you know where to reach us. We feel so thankful to you, our customers, and very proud that you choose our platform to do what you do. You're building a better web and a better world, story by story, and it excites us to be part of that. Thank you so much. Okay, back to you, Dawn. Thank you, Ricky. Well, that concludes the six annual Shorthand Awards. A huge congratulations to all of the finalists and winners today. We would also like to thank our customers, the judging panel, colleagues, and everyone behind the scenes who made this event possible. And thank you to all of you for joining us today. We invite you to continue celebrating with us via our LinkedIn group, Digital Storytelling with Shorthand. Don't forget to follow our social media accounts for up-to-date information about Shorthand, customer stories, industry intel, and details about next year's awards. We would love to hear from you too, so please do tag us in your comments and suggestions and use the hashtag Shorthand Awards. Thank you so much for joining us. Take care, goodbye.